Dare I say, the last Wings home game was lit. Talk about firepower. They erupted for 18 goals, led by Crowley and Courier. The Wings looked to stay hot in New England last night, but Crawford extinguished their three-game win streak, capping off an overtime thriller. Meanwhile, in Rochester, the Nighthawks started to sizzle, earning their first win of the season against the Calgary Roughnecks. Now seeking revenge, can the Wings ignite a new win streak, or will Rochester get their second straight victory? Last week, the Wings played their first home game of the season, and Kevin Crowley put on a show with a highlight reel goal for the 300th of his career. Crowley continues to lead this team in scoring. 10 goals, 16 assists for 26 points on the year, tied for ninth in the league, and continuing to add to some impressive career totals. On the other end, Zach Higgins has been perhaps the most impressive addition to this team. His goals against average down to a 9.70 after last night's game in New England, where he and the Wings deserved a better fate. A late night for both these teams last night, but they're both set to go again tonight in the back half of a back-to-back. -back. The Philadelphia Wings and the Rochester Nighthawks right here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Wells Fargo Center alongside former Wings captain Scott Gabrielson. I'm Brian Smith. Well, the Philadelphia Wings and these Rochester Nighthawks are both tired bunch coming into this one. Wings had a great home opener a week ago, and they're hoping to duplicate that effort tonight. Josh Courier with an eight-point night helped lead the way in that one. No doubt. Well, there's no place like home. The Philadelphia Wings like to be home. Cur Courier had a great debut last week. Four goals, four assists, eight points, was all over the place. He's an electric, high-energy player, plays very well in, in front of the net, and also can get the d job done outside, picking corners like that. Look for Courier, he had an assist last night. It's a little slow, but he's back home. Terrific start to the season for Kevin Crowley. He remains one of the most dangerous scoring threats in the league. Well, the offense starts with Kevin Crowley. Here's his acrobatic 300th goal last weekend. The big cat's just getting it done. He had a great uh, uh, game last week at home. Last night he had a goal to assist, but he's happy to be home on his home turf as well. Kevin Crowley leads the Wings in all the major categories so far this season, as you have come to expect. Only reason he didn't last year is because he didn't start till week four, but he's having, again, another fantastic year. As for these Rochester Nighthawks, they're not the same Nighthawks you remember if you're a longtime lacrosse fan. This is an expansion team playing in Rochester under the same name. Didn't get any wins in their first few weeks out, but they finally got their first one last night over the Calgary Roughnecks, and it came from one of their big scoring threats. They did. Their first win, so they're off the schneid right now. And the guy that gets it done for them, just like Crowley's the main man for the Wings, the guy for Rochester is number 19, Holden Katoni. He is a big, strong guy, rocket shot from outside, strong inside. And take a look, he's a big lefty, so it's coming from the opposite side of the floor of Crowley. Very dangerous. One goal, five assists last night in their first win. And an old Nighthawks star has returned to town with this new team. Sean Evans has come back to continue a storied career. Six points as well for him last night. Well, a seasoned veteran. He wears number 15. Well, he's played in this league for 15 years. He's a guy that gets it done. Scrappy player, only 5'8", but he's as tough as nails. And he's he's put puts points on the board, both goals and assists. He's always in the mix. A dual threat here from the Nighthawks tonight. Wings hope to shut them down, much like they were able to do with Mitch Jones and Keegan Ball last week when Vancouver was here in town. Well, the Wings lost a tough one in overtime to New England last night, but they're ready to bounce back at home after that terrific win over Vancouver. Our opening faceoff is coming up next. The Philadelphia Wings and the Rochester Nighthawks right here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Well on BR Live is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com to see how much you could save. Welcome back into the Wells Fargo Center. Our opening face-off is just moments away. We'll send it downstairs where our Devin Caney is with Josh Courier. Thank you, Brian. I am down here with Philadelphia Wings forward Josh Courier. Josh, you guys are coming off kind of a heartbreaking loss in overtime last night to a division rival. How do you rebound tonight? Uh, I think that just adds a little fuel to the fire tonight, and uh, we're excited to uh, have such a good chance to rebound early. 
It's been a pretty quick turnaround for you guys today. Uh, what was your routine like today? Did you guys get in any pregame workouts or, or warm-ups? Um, it was a little bit different, but I think everyone's ready to go, and uh, I'm feeling good. I think the rest of the team is as well. All right, thanks, Josh. Good luck. Thank you. Our starting goaltenders tonight, Steve Fryer goes for the Rochester Nighthawks. He was off last night in the front half of the back-to-back, 13.98 goals against average, 7.74 save percentage. Zach Higgins plays for the second consecutive game, and he's had a fantastic last couple of games under a 10 goals against average now, Scott. A little different strategy for Rochester. They're going with a fresh goalie. The wing's going to rely on their standby, Zach Higgins. Rochester Nighthawks, Philadelphia Wings here at the Wells Fargo Center. It is a second half of a back-to-back -back for both of these clubs. Rochester got the win last night over Calgary, come from behind fashion. Wings suffered a tough loss to the New England Black Wolves in a game that was just a tremendous game overall. Unfortunately, somebody had to come out with the loss, and it was the Wings. But two more games against that team coming up is going to be a great uh, rivalry, I think, as this year goes on. And one thing about back-to-back -back games is that if after coming off a loss, to be able to play right away and kind of get that taste out of your mouth is an advantage to the Wings. They're angry, and they get to take it out on Rochester, hopefully at home today. Here's Blaze Reardon with the first shot of the game, and that is turned aside by Fryer. Nighthawks pick up the rebound. They'll go the other way. And now a turnover as they cross the restraint line. We're going to have a breakaway here for Liam Patton. Patton stepping on everybody, moves in, shoots, and turned away. Patton unable to convert on a great chance early on. And Rochester now controls. Philly pushed the transition, but a great save by Fryer. Fresh in the goal tonight. Want to see what he can do between the pipes. Kind of been alternating a little bit with this goaltending tandem this season as Rochester as Higgins gets his first save of the game. Last night it was Craig Windy that went for the Nighthawks and he had a fantastic evening as well. I mean, the fact that both of these teams have played last night, there's no excuses for either one. They're both in the same scenario. Both kind of got some tired legs. Got some fresh guys in the lineup, but a lot of them are playing back to back. Devin Buchanan battling along the end boards, trying to keep this ball alive. Almost came away with it, but a third man came in, and the shot clock expires anyway, so Rochester will officially take possession, but a great effort by Kevin Buchanan. Nighthawks getting set up as Turner Evans had a shot on Noel that was knocked aside by Higgins, and the rebound corralled, though, by Dan Nickel. Nickel comes around behind his net. Rochester will reset. This is one of the big threats, Sean Evans trying to work his way out in front. He was turned aside, now Steph Charbonneau breaks out for Philadelphia. Pass was behind Matisse. They'll go after it in the corner, and it's gonna be Rochester that comes away with it. Evans off for Bennett on the near side. And we've got a whistle, we've got a Rochester player down behind the play, and this is Sean Evans. Still slow to get up. Not sure what happened there, but we talked about Sean Evans in the open. He's one of the leaders on this team, 15-year veteran, a guy that's really the Nighthawks rely on. So if this is something serious, they got to worry about that. Mike Hasten is the coach of the Rochester Nighthawks. A good buddy of Paul Day. There's a lot of uh, connections in this game between these two guys and some of these players as well. Nickel with a shot over the shoulder. It's turned aside by Higgins. Patton comes up with that loose ball. Great coach. Both of these teams are very well coached. Both of these coaches played in this league. Both of these coaches have winning pedigree. They they're know how to coach champions because they've been champions before. Wings working around. On the right side, it's Josh Currier. Five tried to feed in front for Reardon, but it bounced off his stick. Reardon was able to sneak in behind the defense, but couldn't control the pass. Here's Bennett, leaving it off. Turner Evans gets the offense set up for Rochester. Evans trying to find some shooting room, gets one away. Higgins with the save, rebound to Baptiste, trying to spring Isaiah Davis Allen. He'll get it to him, but the play will slow a little bit. 
And the Wings will just get things set up. Here's Crowley, winds it, fires, hit the goal post. Crowley finds iron. Not as close as you can get without it going in. Here comes Rochester the other way on the break. Backhander up over the net. And the Wings are going to get to this loose ball. Looked like Rochester had it dead to rights. But Wagner is able to take advantage of a mishap. Quick end to end action early on here at the Wells Fargo Center. Philadelphia Wings, Rochester Nighthawks. Glad to have you along with us this evening as a shot bounced through the crease. Still loose just inside the Rochester zone. And now it'll finally be picked up by Buchanan. He actually flicked it over to the far side. New 30-second shot clock. Wings gonna try to push the ball, really create some fast transition, play fast all night, what Paul Day wants to do. Kyle Matisse able to move in. And now here's a break the other way for Rochester. Going, shooting, off the goal post again. Couple of posts early on. As these two teams just exchanging chances in the first five minutes. Liam Patton controlling for Philadelphia. And now he'll leave to complete the change as Courier controls on the left side. Out to Crowley, they working around. Reardon, Matt Rambo coming around the corner to Crowley. Off the boards to Reardon. Spinning, finds Rambo up high. A shot stopped by Fryer and the rebound picked up by Rochester. Nighthawks coming the other way with it. Holden Katoni, this first touch of the game. They'll start moving it around as they get set up. Rochester playing fast as well. They like the ball starting on the left-hand side and, and transition to the far side to get their shots. Nichols' shot was wide, long rebound, comes back to him all the way out near midfield. And the shot clock winds down, so Wings will have the ball going the other way, and we have a timeout on the floor. 9.34 left to go in the first quarter. Scoreless game here in Philadelphia. Ladies and gentlemen, it's cold outside. But... Scoreless game here in Philadelphia Wings and the Rochester Nighthawks. Paul Day, the head coach of this Philadelphia Wings team, has some keys. Here we go, keys to the game. Play four quarters. They did not do that last night, and they lost in overtime to the New England Black Wolves. And then they need their righty points. Crowley uh, was late last night. He needs to get back on the scoreboard. On the other side, let's talk about the Rochester Nighthawks. Their keys to the game. They need to shut down the lefties who've been the high producing scores for Philadelphia and also slow down the pace. Philadelphia's gonna try to push the transition, try to get a lot of goals off that fast break. This Rochester Nighthawks team, as you would imagine with an expansion team, a lot of rookies, their entire transition team, all rookies this year. And perhaps the Wings take advantage of that, but some young talent on the other side. They are. Let's remember, this is an expansion team, although the Rochester franchise, the name, the Rochester Nighthawks, has won championships in the past. Mike Kaysen actually played for them back in those championship years, actually coached by Paul Day. They've moved on to Halifax, and now this is an expansion team, but still in Rochester and still the Nighthawks. Crowley coming over the top, fired it off the end boards. It got caught up in the back netting, and that will result in a Rochester possession. Early goings here at the Wells Fargo Center. Philadelphia Wings, Rochester Nighthawks still looking for the game's first goal. Although there have been a lot of chances each way. Each team's got a post in the early going. Turner Evans out in front. Turn around backhand shot a little bit off the mark, but Rochester able to retain possession. Another shot whistled wide thanks to some good defensive pressure for the Wings. Evans tried to sneak it across to the far side, and the shot clock winds down. Good defense by the Wings on that possession. Yes, any time that you can hold the other team to a 30-second shot clock expiration is great defense. The Wings are in the gloves of the Rochester players, creating uh, chaos for them, knocking out passes. Here's Crowley looking for a lane, goes to the net, shoots just wide. He's going for that lower right-hand corner. It ricochets out of play, but is ruled to have touched a Rochester stick last, so the Wings will retain possession with a fresh shot clock. Brett Hickey, 11 shots last night, could not find the back of the net. Doug Jamison of New England was absolutely outstanding for the New England Black Wolves last night. The main reason that they were able to come out on top. Wings looking for some redemption here this evening as Crowley fires a shot that was turned aside by Fryer. 
And the rebound's controlled by the captain, Paul Dawson of this Rochester club. Big Paul Dawson, there's a body on the floor, six foot five, 240 pounds. Look for the captain, number two for Rochester to shut down some of the offensive players on the wings. Catoni found the lane, but his shot went wide and bounces out of play. Wings will take over. Anthony Yoakum works it ahead to Kyle Matisse. Matisse in his second year as the captain of this Wings team. Led him through their first season and enjoying some more success in the early goings here in season number two. Here's Reardon trying to go to the net. Could not do so. Stepped on the line. It'll be Rochester ball. Good defense by Robertson. Pushing him from behind. Crease violation. Nighthawks complete their changes. They'll get set up. They work it around. Left side corner, now a shot whistled in, stopped by Higgins. The rebound is picked up by Matisse. Matisse pressured deep in his own end, but he'll work it ahead to Alex Pace. First NLL goal yesterday in the game in New England for Alex Pace. Crowley now off to Brett Hickey on the left wing. Moved it out to Courier, and they work it around. Wings are going with two lefties and three righties in this set right here, trying to get the left lefties a little more room to work. Here's Courier. Tried to maneuver in and then tried the back to back as the shot clock wound down, but that was off target. So Rochester coming the other way. Catoni trying to work his way to the near side, now gets the pass and he'll feed Evans off the bench as Rochester gets set up. Evans with a big shot whistled wide. Catoni couldn't quite corral it, but he will get to it out near center. Catoni looking for the long bid, and he finally fires it on Higgins. He's able to turn it away. Trevor Baptiste gets that loose ball. Baptiste in transition, has five goals doing this so far this year, and now he's got six. Trevor Baptiste is getting really good at using that screen and transition the other way, and the wing's on the board first. It's one nothing. Yes, he is. You know, it starts with the ground ball, folks. He picks it up the first time, protects his stick on a wrap, and then he goes down late on the slide, takes the shot, buries it. Baptiste to start off the scoring for Philadelphia. Trevor Baptiste is winning faceoffs at a 75% clip this year. And now he's got six goals, didn't find the back of the net last year. Paul Day talked about him becoming a more complete player this year, and you see it right there. Yes, he is. 75% at the faceoff dot is quite impressive. This is a guy that knows how to win faceoffs, and now he's, he knows how to score goals. Finally able to pry it out of there, but unfortunately for him, it goes to a Rochester player on the far side, but a great save by Zach Higgins. And now we've got a whistle and a loose ball push. It'll be Rochester's ball. Great save by Higgins as the diving Rochester player tried to get into that far pipe. Higgins swept with him and blocked the shot with his left elbow. Nighthawks set up on the offensive side. Big shot from up high was turned aside by Higgins. That was Dan Lintner letting it fly. Philadelphia coming the other way. Kevin Crowley. Had that 300th goal last time out here in Philadelphia. Looking for more. Off to Josh Courier. His shot is stopped by Fryer. Caught up in his pads. Now they'll drop it out. This Rochester team, again, an expansion team with the same name, much like the Wings were last year. Got their first win last night, but their losses were not bad losses. That's another save made by Higgins. Yeah, all no. of them are three goals or less. Yeah, no, not at all. This it's a young team, but they've got some. They're surrounded and led by some veterans. But any time that you're starting as an expansion team, you're trying to build your chemistry. You're trying to get the the locker room right, and that's what Rochester's doing. And having that first win last night helped them a lot. Vitarelli to Crawley, his shot whistled wide, and a long rebound is going to go all the way back down past the wings bench, and we get. A whistle and a timeout on the floor with 4.13 left to go in this first quarter. Wings lead it 1-0 here at the Wells Fargo Center.
Welcome back to the Wells Fargo Center. The Wings lead the Nighthawks 1-0. I'm joined by Wings head coach Paul Day. Coach, how do you guys get more points on the board? Yeah, we, you know, Trevor obviously scored a great goal in transition. We want to run tonight. You know, back to back, we got a couple extra fresh bodies. But offensively, I think we got to play a little faster. Both colder goaltenders have played well so far, but offensively, we got to attack faster. Trevor just scored his sixth goal this season. What is he doing? What's working for him? Uh, big thing. His fitness this year is off the charts. And, uh, you know, just getting comfortable playing box lacrosse. I mean, he's a great lacrosse player, and every game he gets better. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Back to you guys. Thank you, Devin. Wings talked about this. Uh, Paul Day did this on purpose. It was a short floor yesterday in New England, so they were going to go with more of a bigger lineup there. Tonight, it's about the speed. Yes, absolutely. He got rid of the, the let's say, put some of the bigger bodies on the uh, – uh, scratch list today, but he's got some faster, speedier guys, Kevin Buchanan being one of those. They really want to push the pace, use the big floor tonight in Philadelphia and see if they can get a number of transition goals. Rochester working around here with eight to shoot as Evans, Turner Evans, tries to find his way to the net, but he hits a couple of wings defenders. And Philadelphia takes possession. Now here's Patton with another chance the other way. Two Nighthawks off the bench. Patton still looking for room. Now he will roll off. Had a great opportunity there, but he just couldn't quite catch that long pass cleanly. That's one of the threats that Zach Higgins gives you as a goalie. He likes to push up that ball. He actually had an assist last night by pushing the, uh, that outright pass up, and he almost had Patton with one. Shot off the end boards, bounced onto the back of the net. Rochester will take over from there. Coming up on three minutes left to go here in this first quarter. Wings lead at 1-0. Trevor Baptiste, the only goal of the game so far, his sixth of the year. Overhead shot stopped and corralled by Higgins. It's one of the strengths of his game. You don't see a lot of rebounds off of him. Here's Isaiah Davis Allen. Fresh body that Paul Day talked about, not in the lineup last night. Shot whistled wide. It comes back down to the Philadelphia end. And here's Sean Evans with an opportunity. Feeds a man coming in. Great save by Higgins. And another shot whistled wide. Sean Evans trying to set up a couple of teammates. Higgins, though, up to the task. So unselfish. They were the right passes. He threw it to the guy that's open instead of taking a, a bad angle shot. Evans did just that, but great saves by Higgins. That second one went wide. Looked like he had it covered, though, on the post. Here's Corey Vitarelli as the Wings have nine to shoot. Vitarelli coming around up high. Pass finally corralled by Matisse, three to shoot. Matisse trying to get to the net, gets that shot away just in time, but Rochester will control the loose ball. Here's Turner Evans, one of three Evans on this roster. Two of them are related. Sean and Turner are cousins. Dylan Evans played for the Wings last year. Here's a shot that whistles just wide of Higgins. And the long rebound is controlled by Katoni. The shot clock winding down. He fed a pass to the right of the net, but that was intercepted. Here's Patton again the other way. Three on two opportunity. Smart play to pull it out. Get all five of offensive players on the floor. Big shot from Courier is gobbled up by Fryer. And now he'll play a long pass ahead. In transition come the Nighthawks. A shot blocked, though. Great effort there from the Wings to block the shot from Corey Highfield. And now Philadelphia with a chance coming the other way. A shot stopped by Fryer again. We saw a lot of this in the last quarter of last night's game. Goalie's just making save after save, Scott. Well, Fryer is. He's solid right now. He's got fresh legs. He watched last night, and Rochester getting their first win. And now he's been a big blocker tonight so far for Rochester. Charbonneau able to stand up a man, and the shot whistled wide of the net. Davis Allen could not quite control the loose ball, though. Katoni gets it back. Quick shot stopped by Higgins. And the Wings will control the loose ball as we are under a minute left to go here in this first quarter. Wings still with a 1-0 lead. Brett Hickey along the near side to Crowley. And the Wings will start to work it around. Courier back to Crowley. Looking for a lane. Still holding along the near side with five to shoot. Now he gets one away, but that one was wide. And the ball will carry him out of play. 
Rochester will have it going the other way, able to play for last shot here with 14 seconds left on the clock. Crowley's been looking for that lower right-hand corner. His last three shots have been right there, low and away. Here's Sean Evans, gets it out to Katoni. Katoni with a shot, that's deflected wide. And it bounces out of play as the horn sounds. Some pushing and shoving after the horn, and it's escalating as Turner Evans got a shot in up high on Liam Patton. Nickel is on top of Patton at the moment. He's pulled off. Is Ian Lord trying to defuse things? Or at least he was. Ian Lord, <laughs> a veteran, but an enforcer just the same. There's one of the A's as an assistant captain for this Wings team. Looking to mix it up a little bit. That's a guy that you don't want to mess with. Things finally calmed down. We'll have the penalties when we return. Wings have the 1-0 lead after one quarter play. Trevor Baptiste with the goal here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Philadelphia Wings lead the Rochester Nighthawks 1-0. After one quarter of play, the Wings are back home at the Wells Fargo Center this Friday, January the 24th, for Local Heroes Night, presented by Tito's Handmade Vodka against the New York Riptide. Visit wingslax.com for more information and secure your seats today. Scott, a defensive battle here in this one so far, and Zach Higgins has picked up right where he left off last night. Yes, he has. He's just playing really tall in the net. He's an acrobatic goalie. He likes to make saves with his arms, feet, any way he can, and he's been solid so far holding the goose egg. This is one of the second uh, quarters this season that the Wings have shut out their opponent, opponents. So great job, and it starts with Zach Higgins. So we've got Occupants in the penalty boxes. There are two players per team in there at the moment. It appears that we are going to play five on five to start this second quarter. And we'll get the details on the penalties as soon as we can. Zach Higgins, a perfect first quarter, almost a perfect fourth quarter yesterday, Scott, but just out dueled by J Doug Jamison, but he's, you know, you can tell he's, he's still in the zone tonight. Yes, he is. So we got penalties, two penalties on either team. So you've got Patton in and also Lord in the box for the wings. It looks like you got Evans and, and uh, Mickel for Rochester. So a couple of key offensive guys for this Rochester club stuck in the box until the next hard whistle because they can't just come out after two minutes. You often say that's a good trade. So you have two defensive players. It's taking out two of the better offensive threats for Rochester. See if the Wings can take advantage of this. We'll look for the penalties to expire around the 13 minute mark. They do not put them on the board in this situation. So they are about half over though. Here's a guy to keep your uh, eye on right there. Curtis Knight, number nine for the Rochester Nighthawks. He had three goals and three assists last night in the Rochester Nighthawks first victory. He's been quiet so far, however. Another save for Higgins and another bid for Philadelphia is Fryer able to get a shoulder on that shot. Rochester quickly coming the other way. Daryl Robertson, a defenseman staying out there on offense. He fed that pass to the far side and a shot in on Higgins is gobbled up. Wings coming the other way. You're Rochester, this is a case where some of your defensemen are going to have to play offense until the lineup is restored. Here's Buchanan on the near side. Buchanan making some moves, feeds one in front, reared it, finally got the shot away. Stopped by Fryer, though. His first bid was kind of thwarted when he was bumped by a Nighthawks player. Here comes Rochester with a shot and a save made by Higgins again. Wow, what a great give and go right there for Rochester. Great play, get it right back to your teammate, but Higgins just ate it up. Rylan Reese, one of those rookie transitional players turned aside. Matt Rambo feeds it out to Brett Hickey. His shot was deflected wide. Wings get it back. And we've got a whistle. Looks like we're gonna have another penalty here. As that call is made, the penalty box is empty out. 
as we had passed that 13 minute mark. They're going to stay empty. Oh, no, here we go. Here we go. It is an illegal substitution. Just took a while penalty for, an illegal substitution for the guy to come off the bench. Served by Trevor, number nine, Trevor Baptiste. Never a penalty that you like Please at all. Illegal substitution, a little nine, sloppy on the transition from O to D. So the first man up situation of the game goes to the Rochester Nighthawks. Bouncing shot turned aside by Higgins. Turner Evans controls the rebound. Philadelphia's been incredibly effective on their penalty kill all season. 66%, number one in the National Lacrosse League. Where you look at Rochester on the power play, they're 64% on their, I'm sorry, they're uh, 31%, 11th in the league. They're having some troubles putting the ball in the net. Sean Evans looking, holding, works it out. Gatoni with a shot and he scores. Holden Gatoni finally gets one through Zach Higgins low. Took 18 shots for the Nighthawks to finally put one home, but we're all tied up at one. Let's take a look at it. Katoni's at the point. We talked about him in the open, just such a dangerous shooter. Here he is, overhand shot. Higgins kind of moves a little to the left and he beats Higgins to the right for that left-hand side. Great goal by Katoni, his 10th so far. Looked like Katoni might have looked him off a little bit there. He had a night last night in the Rochester Nighthawks first win, one goal, five assists last night. He's matching his goal performance already here. Baptiste wins the faceoff and gets it off to Ryan Wagner. So we are all knotted at one. Here's Blaze Reardon moving in, shoots and a save made by Fryer. We got a crease violation whistled, so it'll be Rochester ball. Matt Bennett a little slow to get up, but now we'll trot off. And here comes the captain, Paul Dawson. He'll feed it back out to center. Quickly to it was Curtis Knight before it crossed the halfway line. And Knight will bring it back down. Works it out to Catoni. Back to Knight, no look pass. Knight looking to shoot. It was blocked right off the stick by Burns. Got it back though. Another shot stopped by Higgins. Pushed that rebound out of harm's way. Here's Matisse in transition. Kyle Matisse headed toward the net. Looking to shoot. Gets it away. He scores! Kyle Matisse! Able to hold on to the defender just long enough to put that one home. 2 1 wins. Let's take a look at it. The captain wearing the C takes it right down the center of the floor. Almost gets the stick check, but look at the twister on the shot. Acrobatic goal by Matisse. Let's take another look at it. Twister go almost loses the ball, but no, twists it in, beats him five hole. Great goal by the captain, Kyle Matisse. And you got to give Sean Evans credit for that check. He was able to get around and get his stick right on the head of Matisse's stick and almost forced it free. But a great job by Matisse to retain control. And he puts the wings back ahead by one. It's 2 1. About four minutes gone here in the second quarter. The wings back on the attack after Baptiste wins another draw. The do everything player, Kyle Matisse, offense, defense, goal scoring. And as we talk about face offs with Baptiste, wings get it right back. Rambo with the shot that was stopped by Fryer. Wings retain possession. Near side, it's Buchanan. Trying to spin away from a defender. Off to Rambo. Rambo gets the pass back. A shot stopped by Fryer, and the rebound bounces right back to him. Almost able to spring a guy the other way, but it'll be Rochester now bringing it up the floor. Watch all the action from around the National Lacrosse League this season on BR Live. Choose an annual, monthly, or per game pass. For more information, visit nll.com slash BR Live. Turnover here as the wings going the other way. Now on the right side, it's Anthony Yoakum. Leads Isaiah Davis Allen, who will pull off the pressure and now facilitate getting the offense on the floor. Ten minutes even left to go in this second quarter. Wings lead it two to one. Bitterelli with a shot. That whistled wide. Got a piece of it. Whistled wide, but Fryer got a piece of it, so a fresh shot clock. Kevin Crowley going to the net. Bounces one toward the net. Stopped by Fryer. 
got a piece of that one as well. Wings will retain control. Yep, another 30 second shot clock. Clock, the wings are going with the three righties, two lefties. Cross field pass intended for Reardon, hit the back of a Rochester defender. And the loose ball along the near side. Crowley was kind of waiting for his man to pick it up so he could attack. It took a moment, but that strategy paid off. Great four checking by Kevin Crowley, never giving up on the ball. Great defense for the offensive player. That was Daryl Robertson down there who was trying to pick up the ball, and Crowley was just waiting for him to do so so he could make him drop it again. Here's Matt Rambo, finds a lane, gets a shot away, save made by Fryer. He got just enough of that one. Wings get the ball back, though, and we've got a delayed penalty coming up here against Rochester. So Higgins trots to the bench. Wings with 21 to shoot. They get the extra attacker out, and they'll get set up. Higgins. Working along left side, cross-court pass to Vitarelli. Shot stopped by Fryer. Another bid stopped as well. We get the touch-up, and the penalty is coming. We've got a timeout on the floor. Wings will be on the power play when we come back. 2-1 here in the second. You did something wrong. From the Wells Fargo Center, where the Wings lead the Nighthawks 2-1. to one. I'm joined now by Nighthawks head coach Mike Hazen. Coach, you guys got your first win in this new franchise's history last night. How do you get another? Uh, hopefully do a little bit of the same thing we did last night. But, uh, yeah, we just got to go through a few moments here and we'll get back our feet back underneath us. Do you think you guys are succeeding at doing that tonight? Sorry, I'm very are you guys succeeding at what you did last night, tonight? You know what, no, we're, uh, we kind of look like we have a little bit of bus legs, and I think they do as well, but uh, we just got to keep going, and then we'll find a way here. All right, thanks, Coach. Back to you guys. Wings on the power play. Dylan Evans is in the box. Chopper is welcoming him there. Does he see him off to the right? Dylan Evans in the box. Two minutes for holding the stick. So put the penalty kill, look at the power play for the Wings, 35% penalty kill for Rochester, 64%. This should be a good matchup here. Let's see if the Wings can put one in the back of the net. The Wings have had the fewest man-up opportunities in the league this year. This is just the 15th that they've had this season. Let's see if they can't convert. They work it around, put it out in front, they score, Kevin Crowley. The play works. First time out, wings up two now, three to one. Just great stick work. Let, look at the ball move, the ball moves faster than man. Skip past Vitarelli. Look at this little slip cut by Crowley. Catch and release, beautiful goal. Vitarelli sees the cut, Crowley catch. One time release, goal, wings. Kevin Crowley. 11th of the year for Crowley. He has scored in every game this season for Philadelphia. And a power play goal at that. So that's a big goal for Philadelphia. And there's Baptiste winning a faceoff, giving the Wings possession once again. Steph Charbonneau will leave it off and departs and lays Reardon. Feeds a man off the bench. That is Crowley with a shot and a save made. The rebound is loose in feet at the top of the crease. Hickey trying to get there on the end boards. Takes a shot. It bounces into the stick of Fryer, though. Wings goals. And here comes Rochester the other way. Crowley. Wings are very active in front of the goal after a shot on offense. We always like to see that on an offensive to be an offensive threat. Here's Sean Evans trying to find the lane to the net. Can't do it. Plays it a far side instead. That was broken up. And Reardon tried to play it into space on the near side out of the reach of Lord, but the Wings got a fortunate bounce and they will control as Alex Pace gobbled it up. Coming up on seven minutes left to go in this second quarter. Wings lead it three to one. Here's Buchanan, winds, fires, save made by Fryer, long rebound. Actually went wide of the net, so the shot clock is winding down. It was tossed in, and it's gonna be a new 30 here for Philadelphia. Smart play, just bounced right off Fryer. Wings get a new 30. Here's Corey Vitarelli, off for Buchanan. Juking in, winds, fires, another stop by Fryer. He gobbles that up. Rochester now coming out the other way. Fryer was drafted by the Wings all the way back in 2011. He didn't make his first start in this league until the 2018 season. 
has come along since then and is trying to help this Rochester franchise get established. Here come the Nighthawks moving in. A shot and a save made by Higgins. And we've got a whistle. We'll see what this is about. It's going to be an illegal cross check against Philadelphia, it looks like. As Trevor Baptiste makes the long walk to the penalty box. Philadelphia number 90. Minor penalty, illegal cross check. So back to the man up situation for Rochester. Let's take a look at it. Let's watch nine. Baptiste right there. And they score relatively quickly in the man up. It's Sean Evans. Clear lane to the net, wires it past Higgins. Evans, a wily vet, takes his opportunity real quick, wasting no time getting the ball, sees that lower corner, and just bangs it home. First look, sets himself up, gets low, just beats Higgins through that five hole. Thought he had it, Evans with the goal. Rochester within one. Eighth of the year for Sean Evans. Wings control the ball again on the faceoff win by Baptiste. We've got a little bit of a scoreboard malfunction. We're looking at a four to two score, but the score is actually three to two, as you see on your screen there. And we've got a whistle and another penalty is coming up here. And that happened so quickly, not sure who touched it last, but it is going to be a Rochester penalty this time. So another Wings power play opportunity coming up. We'll get the call. Two minutes holding. So a holding penalty will put the wings back man up. Another look at it. Rochester wings on the power play. Three, Dylan Evans, two minutes for holding. Batiste at the point. Rear three, Dylan top Evans, left. Two minutes for Literally holding. lower left. This all set up perfectly for Philadelphia last time. We'll see if they can't do it again. A shot. Came up a little short, I think, than Crawley intended. And it stopped by Fryer. Tried a long pass out the other way, but it bounced out of the reach of its intended recipient, Rylan Reese. And we have a whistle and a turnover. Wings coming the other way. Here's Blaze Reardon. Working around the right side. They just play catch with it. Matisse is at the top. Now he'll switch off, and they put it down near side. The Norelia shot, and a save made by Fryer. Reared and put it wide of a mostly open net. Now here's Crowley behind his back. Another shot stopped. Vitarelli could not get it cleanly. It bounces around wide again. Hickey gets it back. Fresh 30 here for Philadelphia. Great opportunities, great ball movement. Vitarelli hit that pipe, but great shot so far. Now Vitarelli stepping in, trying to go low. That was kicked aside by Fryer. And now a hit from behind, and it's going to be another penalty on Rochester. A boarding call here against Daryl Robertson. You can get away with a lot of things in the National Lacrosse League. One thing you cannot do is push a player from behind right in front of the boards like that. That's going to send you right to the, to the penalty box every time. Rochester penalty number 11, two minutes 40. So 53 seconds of a two-man advantage here for the Philadelphia Rochester Wings. Penalty number 11, Darryl Robertson, two minutes for First morning. five on three Rochester we've seen penalty. this year for Philadelphia. 11, Robertson, two minutes Here's for Matt morning. Rambo. Here's side to really fed it down low and they score. It's Blaze Reardon. That's Hickey, excuse me, Hickey with the goal. And so the Wings able to capitalize. They'll stay up a man. It's 4-2. Almost a no-win situation. Look at Hickey just straddling goal line extended. Literally with a no-look pass almost. Just a great feed from behind. Look at Hickey. His body was more to the back of the net than the front, but a one-time catch and finish. Great goal, Brett Hickey. So Hickey with his ninth of the year, and the Wings will stay up a man. 
It only took seven seconds after that second penalty for them to capitalize, so they've got almost another full power play here. Wings goal. And Score. illegal procedure by, by Rochester gives it back to Philadelphia. 15. And that'll bring just to a timeout on the floor. 4.54 left to go in the second quarter. Wings lead it 4-2. Wings goal scored by number 11, Brent Hickey. Assisted by number one, Matt Rambo. Philadelphia Wings lead the Rochester Nighthawks 4-2. to two. Wings fans, be sure to check out our next telecast. It comes up this Friday against the New York Riptide. Coverage begins Friday night at 7, right here on NBC Sports Philadelphia and on NBCSportsPhiladelphia.com. Sunday night in Philadelphia, and you got loud and proud fans watching Kevin Crowley playing some defense here. Look at the one-handed wrap on Robertson. Playing D, getting it done on defense, and also getting it done on O. So far, he's taken a lot of shots. He's just, he's been shut out until he gets one right in front. Six shots already for Kevin Crowley. We still got five minutes left to go in the second quarter of this game. Wings are on the power play. You gotta make some noise. They had a five on three situation, and they only needed seven seconds to capitalize on it. Brett Hickey with the goal just a few moments ago. And now they've got a minute 50 to work with on the man up after the boarding penalty. It was called on Daryl Robertson. Coach Paul Day not happy with it, but happy that he's got his team on the power play. So they've got Crowley at the point here. This setup, Kerr down low right, Vitarelli low left. Crowley walks off the point, feeds Vitarelli, and he scores. Corey Vitarelli through the legs of Fryer. Wings able to take advantage of both ends of this power play situation, and they lead it five to two. Take a look at it, slide over, then a skip pass to Vitarelli, fakes high, shoots low and away. Big goal for the by the 10-year veteran Vitarelli. Look at the shot, gets Fryer high, buries it low. Beautiful goal by number 23, Vitarelli. Six goals on the season now for Vitarelli, the main off-season acquisition on the offense from outside of the organization. Wings already had Brett Hickey, but they missed him for almost all of last year, so he's almost like an acquisition as well. Yep. A, a winner, a leader, a veteran player. He had two assists last night, but no goals. He's happy to get on the scoreboard in the scoring column. Great goal by Corey Vitarelli. A whistle and a turnover here by Philadelphia. Daryl Evans has it on the near side for Rochester. Nighthawks will get set up as we approach four minutes left to go here in this second quarter. Wings lead by three, five to two. Second quarters have been their best this year. They were outscoring teams 19 to 10 in the second quarter on the way into this game tonight. Did it four nothing yesterday to New England. Backhand shot. Well off the mark by Catoni. And now here's Anthony Yoakum at center. One hand grab by Matisse to move it up the floor. Gets it to Yoakum. Wings back on O. You said it earlier, Scott. Four quarter game needed from this team tonight. This second quarter again has been their strongest, but it's keeping it up through the next two. As here's a shot from the right side. Nice save made by Fryer. He got quickly from post to post to keep that out. And it is corralled by Paul Dawson. Great skip pass. Vitarelli just hesitated a little bit and missed that shot, but a great save by Fryer. If you love the NLL, you'll love all the highlights on our social channels. Get the best goals, saves, and action during the games and during the week on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and NLL.com. Liam Burns with a great ground ball, double fives with a GB at nine last night. He's just, that's what he does well, and a great ground ball by 55. There's the pick and roll. Rambo looking for Reardon, but Fryer able to come up with the save. They love running that play. Didn't come up with one that time. But you can bet that they're going to go do it again. Here's Sean Evans. Thought about the shot, but he whistles it out high. Now a long shot stopped by Higgins. And the rebound is controlled by Kyle Matisse. Drops it briefly, trying to get away from the pressure from the Rochester defense. Now he finally does work it ahead to Wagner. Wagner feeds Baptiste. He couldn't shoot. Able to get away from the Rochester defender zone. He'll get it out to Carboneau, who will leave it off for the offense. 
great handle. You see the stick work of these guys. These are the best lacrosse players in the world. The National Lacrosse League has them out every night all across this league. It's so fun to watch and to see some of the talent we've seen between both teams tonight. Sean Evans to Dylan Evans. That shot hit a wing and went over the end glass into the netting out of play. Rochester will set up with a fresh shot clock and under two minutes to go here now in the second quarter. Here's Sean Evans looking for a lane. Dishes it off. Caputo with a shot. Save made by Higgins again. 24 saves now for Higgins as that was the 26th shot of the half. Wings lead at 5-2 and looking for more here with just under 90 seconds left to go in this second quarter. Here's Rambo. Shakes and bakes to the offhand. Comes out in front. Shot just wide. Picked up on the end boards. Fed back out in front. Delayed penalty coming up here against the Rochester Nighthawks. Rambo had three goals last night. He was looking for his first of this evening. He was trying to go in with the dive. He's going to get a hold on Rochester. They're going to be back on the power play. Coming up on NLL at the half, Devin Caney tags along with San Diego Seals forward Wes Berg to see how he and his teammates are growing the game in Southern California. Highlights and analysis of the first half as well, all coming up at the Rochester half. Rochester penalty to number 20, Matt Bennett. Two minutes for holding. Rochester penalty to number 20, Matt Bennett. Two minutes for holding. So another man up situation coming up for the it's wings. Mike Hasten certainly probably not happy to be on the kill as much as they have been in this first half. Yep, you don't like to be at a disadvantage. Certainly gets a power play that's as effective as the Wings is tonight. Rambo and Crowley playing catch. Now near side, Vitarelli tried to shoot, couldn't. Now he comes around the crease, back out in front, and he scores! Corey Vitarelli with some perseverance. And he's able to tuck it home, 6-2 Philadelphia. Yes, he does. What patience by Vitarelli. You think he's got the quick stick? No. He goes from completely behind the net and then just dunks it in a little backhand flip. Another look at it. One-hander gets in front of the goal and just flips it into that upper right-hand corner. What a goal by Corey Vitarelli. Stays out of the crease. Good goal, Vitarelli. Vitarelli was... Out of room, but he just kept on going around that crease and finally was able to tuck it inside the right post. Here's Charbonneau with a big shot as the Wings controlled that face off. That was stopped by Fryer. About a nine second difference between the shot clock and the game clock, so Rochester will have to take one more attempt here. It's Lintner on the near side. Leaves it off for Evans. Evans moving in, tried to dish it out in front. It was blocked. Wings have it. 20 seconds left in the period. And we've got a whistle and a timeout called by Paul Day. So the Wings will get to reset and get a play here with 18.4 seconds left on the clock. Smart timeout by Paul Day. Tracy Kaliski is going to draw up a play for his offensive players with 18.4 left. Trying to get a goal before halftime. The Wings are giving season ticket members the chance to shoot for their seats and get their season tickets for free. There's still time to become a season ticket member and get your chance to take a shot on goal. Check out wingslax.com to learn more. Corey Vitarelli, a sudden huge threat on the power play here tonight. Yes, he's getting it done. Paul Day wanted a veteran leadership and veteran experience. Corey Vitarelli was a guy he brought in this year just to do that. Look at this beautiful goal. As you said, perseverance and patience to kind of hold that ball, bring it around, wrap it around, and then a flip into that upper corner. Two goals, two assists tonight from the veteran, Corey Vitarelli. Wings power play had not seen much action so far this year. They were 10th in the league coming in, but perhaps that was because they hadn't had much time to use it in game situations. Goalie is pulled, and the Wings have the extra attacker on for the final shot here as we get to 10 seconds. Six on five opportunity. Look for somebody to come from behind the net. A lot of screens, up picks, trying to get it done. Rambo with the shot. It's stopped by Fryer. No rebound. He'll throw it the length of the floor. It will go wide. Wouldn't have made it anyway. So the Wings get a good scoring chance there on that final possession, but can't convert. However, they will take a four-goal lead to the locker room. 
Rochester, 27. So a tremendous first half for Philadelphia. You heard Mike Hasten say it in his interview, bus legs. Both these teams traveled a lot last night. Wings got in about 3 a.m. And you probably saw a little bit of that in the first quarter, but they're starting to stretch out now. They are. Little, little, little sloppy, but all good so far. Devin Caney is downstairs. She's got Corey Vitarelli. Thanks, Brian. I'm down here with Corey Vitarelli. Corey, you've had quite the first half. What's working for you? Uh, well, just a recipient of some nice passes. And, um, you know, after last night's game, we're a little disappointed with the outcome. So we're just trying to be sharp here. Uh, it's been a pretty tight game, but uh, nice to get a couple to sort of get a bit of separation here. Is tonight a redemption game of sorts for you guys? Uh, for sure. I mean, we all, every game is so important. It's always a fresh start. You want to put last night behind you. Uh, especially on the back-to-backs, it's kind of nice to get back at it. But we got a lot of lacrosse left to play, so we still got to be sharp here for the next 30 minutes. All right. Thanks, Corey. Good luck. Guys. Corey Vitarelli with a couple of power play goals. And that power play is the reason the Wings have this four-goal lead. It is six to two. We've got first half highlights and analysis. Lots more coming up at halftime here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Halftime here at the Wells Fargo Center. Philadelphia Wings and the Rochester Nighthawks here tonight. Well, growing the game is a phrase many of those in the lacrosse community are familiar with. No one works harder to spread awareness and their love of the game than the players of the National Lacrosse League. Devin Caney was able to tag along with San Diego Seals forward Wes Berg to see how he and his teammates are working to break barriers and create a buzz around box lacrosse in Southern California. Good shot, good shot. You'll see kids who have literally never picked a stick up in their life, and then you'll have kids who have played for six or seven years with some talent. There you go, good shot. We split them up and kind of make it interesting and fun for all of them, and um, we get you know quite a few coaches out there with a lot of experience coaching kids and at the youth level and some kids who have played before. So. We, uh, yeah, we just show up and uh, kind of we bring a bunch of sticks and some balls and sometimes we're told there's 20 kids and 60 or 70 will show up so that's always good to see and we, we kind of coach on the fly and change some things up depending on the skill level. Good shot. There we go, we're getting the hang of it, eh? Good. Something that I feel like people in our lacrosse world are always talking about is, is growing the game. Is that the goal to kind of get either new players or fans? Definitely, so we're trying to not only bring lacrosse to some areas around here with different demographics that might have never even seen lacrosse before. Um, kind of trying to break those barriers and get in there and, and get some kids who you know, never even heard of it before and, and a lot of times they pick it up and some kids are just naturals at it and they love it and they start playing it and their little brother might pick it up and they, they come out to a game which is awesome to see and sometimes they decide, oh, I, you know, baseball or soccer or, or football is for them. After we shoot, we got to go down low, right? We need some passers down there. A lot of times in the North County, there's some areas where lacrosse has been there for quite some time, and there's a lot of people from the East Coast where their parents had played, and so they've already seen lacrosse, but we're trying to show them indoor lacrosse. So we hope to get you guys out to some games if you haven't been to a box lacrosse game. They're a lot of fun. Some kids who've been introduced to the field game but may have never seen box or may have never played box before. Growing up, I never had access to a professional football player with the Colts when they were in Baltimore. Baseball players, the Orioles were never around. We never got a chance to shake someone's hand that was a professional athlete unless we just bumped into them by accident at a grocery store and you were too nervous to go up and talk to them. So you guys all have a tremendous opportunity to be on a field, to be here today, and to talk to guys that get paid at the highest level of a sport and learn from them and grow with the sport. So we really uh, appreciate you guys being out here. It's been good. All right, let's break it down. Let's break it down. Six up. Six up. Some great things going on in Southern California in the world of box lacrosse. Here at the Wells Fargo Center, it's halftime. Wings and the Rochester Nighthawks will be back in just a moment with first half highlights and analysis here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Six to two, our halftime score. The Wings lead the Rochester Nighthawks as Wingston helps pick up the hollow balls off the field, part of the 
great experience here at the Wells Fargo Center for Wings games. Second home game of the season for the Philadelphia Wings. Looking for similar success to what they had last Friday night against the Vancouver Warriors. And Scott, the uh, power play finally getting some uh, time on the field for the Wings here today, and they've capitalized. Yes, big time. They've really put the ball in the back of the net. They're taking advantage of uh, the mistakes of Rochester, but it's been Zach Higgins in this first half. Impressive. 23 saves on 25 shots. He stopped it from outside. He stopped it from inside. Again, we talked about him being an acrobatic goalie. He's making saves with his arms and, and wrists and elbows. Really love the play of Zach Higgins so far. Kyle Matisse, the captain of this Wings team for a second season, has just been a tremendous anchor for this team. The do-it-all guy, the Swiss Army knife for the Philadelphia Wings. Look at this ground ball. Coast to coast goal by the captain. Almost loses it. What incredible handle. A little twister goal between the, the legs of the Rochester goaltender. The captain delivers with a beautiful goal. Had a little bit of pushing and shoving in earlier on in this game, and this didn't result in any power plays, but it certainly has led to some things that have brought out some power plays as the uh, chippiness factor comes in. And that's uh, part of the charm of this game. Absolutely, whether it's Rochester being an expansion team or Rochester being anything else, it's still a grudge match between these two teams. Wings out shooting the Nighthawks 30 to 27 so far in this one. And uh, the power play number right there is that most important thing. How about that? Four for four, nothing like being perfect on the power play. The Wings are, are, are really making the Rochester Nighthawks pay on the power play. So the Philadelphia Wings after a tremendous first half looking for more of the same here in the second. The NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. Philadelphia Wings lead the Rochester Nighthawks 6-2 at halftime here at the Wells Fargo Center. Last time out, we were able to put a microphone on Trevor Baptiste to give you a real close look at what life is like on the floor of a National Lacrosse League game. Let's go! Yeah, I straight on. Watch They're sending that guy, so I turned and gave him a pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. inside the world of Trevor Baptiste during a Wings game and you see how hard he works out there on the floor. January 31st is college night at the Wings game when they take on the Georgia Swarm at 7 p.m. College students can get tickets to this game for $15 with a valid college ID. Visit WingsLAX.com for more information and score your seats today. Wings have the 6-2 lead after the first half. Scott a successful one, but they got to finish it off. Yeah, I mean, look at look at Trevor Baptiste. I love that mic'd up. So great for number nine, Baptiste. You just show what he is, the full full complement of the skills that this guy brings to this team, the energy, defense, scoring face-offs. Just a great clip. Love to see it. One of the interesting things I found about that clip is they're not always arguing with the referee. Sometimes they're telling them they're right, huh? 
Absolutely. Down there. Yeah. I'm sure you've been a part of some of those conversations. No doubt. Oftentimes you argue though. <laughs> You, don't, well, you never think it's a penalty. Well, the Wings were cruising last night going into the third quarter, but the uh, goaltending tightened things up at the other end for New England. Zach Higgins was almost as good as Doug Jamison last night. He's looking for redemption tonight as Higgins, and he's well on his way as he has only let in two of the 25 shots that Rochester's had in this game. And remember, we're talking about it. We want the Wings, are we saying the keys of the game? The, the uh, Wings have to play. Four quarters, and let's talk about last night. So here's a big controversy going in to tonight, whether or not, you take a look at it, whether or not Kalen Crawford was in the crease for his overtime goal. It was very close. The camera angles available could not determine whether Crawford had stepped on that line or not. So the goal stood. It was called a good goal on the field. Paul Day was not happy, as you would imagine. But uh, you can't change it. All you got to do is, all you can do is use it as motivation, maybe for the rest of the season. I don't know. Just remember that. Keep that in your crawl and use it out on the field. Yes, no question. No one was happy about it. They felt they got robbed, but it's a good thing it happened early in the season. But the New England Black Wolves are now 4-0, and the Wings come in tonight 3-2 with a little bitterness, and they're taking it out on the Rochester Nighthawks. Nighthawks control to open this third quarter. Katoni. Looking for a shooting lane, turns and fires one wide of the net. And the Wings get the clean bounce off the end boards as Kyle Matisse gobbles it up. Katoni one and one for the night. One goal, one assist, a little quiet for him. Both actually Evans and Katoni have two points on one goal, one assist each. They're the high scorers for Rochester. And for them to come back, they're gonna need those guys to come alive. Josh Courier. Took a nifty pass from Kevin Crowley. Couldn't get the shot away, though. Now he's thinking about it, moving in, trying to find some shooting room. Three on the clock. Tried the dunk attempt from the far side, but that one was unsuccessful. And Rochester now will come out. Give and go here. A shot to the right side. Turned away by Higgins. Head off the stick of high field. Ball bounces free, though, at center. And Rochester able to regain possession. But now a turnover by the Nighthawks as Liam Burns ran in the way of that pass. A couple sloppy plays right there. Evans thought that he had the behind the back, but great defensive play by Philadelphia. Here's Crowley, cross feet, looking for Buchanan there. He couldn't get the shot away. Now out to Rambo. Tried to play it off for Crowley. That was knocked away. Crowley dragged away from that loose ball. It's still loose on the floor. Tied up in feet, and now will be pulled out by Rochester. Doug Udding picking up that loose ball and will control on the offensive end. Now he'll depart and the Nighthawks will get set up. Off the bench, it's Katoni. Working around to the left side. Shot over the top was blocked. That was off the stick of Knight. Wings wanted to break out. Batiste was hanging out around near midfield. They will get to it, though, and here comes Trevor Baptiste. Baptiste moving in, feeds near side, and Matisse fires it home. Trevor Baptiste already had one in transition, and he was able to look off the defense and then feed Matisse, who buries it. It's 7-2 Philadelphia. Coach Paul Day often talks about guys only getting better, and Trevor Baptiste is only getting better. He gets into what is what this year is his danger zone, right in front of the net. Is he going to shoot it? No. Presence of mind to just flip it over to, to Matisse, sit there on goal line extended. A little draw, dump, one-time shot, goal, Matisse, well done. Great two-man play. Excellent transition goal for Philadelphia as the faceoff will be controlled by Baptiste. Just such a smart play by Baptiste. He looked like he might have been forcing it, but again, he was in that danger zone in front of the net, but just dumps it over to Baptiste, pushes it in, quick stick, great goal by the captain. Wings with possession early in the third quarter, now up by five, seven to two, as Matisse fires another one. That one was stopped by Fryer. Rochester controls the loose ball. You see his stats, goal, assist, and nine loose balls from Matisse. This guy just gets it done all over the floor. Corey Highfield fired one off the chest of Higgins, and it eventually ended up back in the wing's crease, so they're able to regain possession. 
as Alex Pace will move it up the floor. Matt Rambo, not wearing his customary red socks tonight. Must be in the laundry from last night. Rambo working it up high. Dishes it off near side. Vinarelli looking for his third, but he couldn't get the shot away. Rather, he did get the shot away. He tucked it down into the shoulder of uh, Fryer. And it just kind of stuck there. Yep, nice save by Fryer to shut off that near pipe. Here's Catoni. He fed a man off the bench. It was Knight. Knight looking around. Back to Catoni. Fire save made again by Higgins. It just sticks to him. Here's Isaiah Davis. Allen moving quickly the other way. Got off the Baptiste. Winds and fires. That hit Knight. And Rochester regains control in its own crease. Long pass ahead. Here's Evans with a shot. That one missed. And it's picked up by Kyle Matisse. Who else but 46 with another ground ball. He's in the double digits so far right now. Liam Burns led the team last night in New England with nine ground balls, and Matisse has 10 so far early in this game. They're just starting off the second half. Here's Kevin Crowley. Eight to shoot, moves in, gets the shot away. Save made, Fryer. Rebound controlled by Rochester. 42 shots for Philadelphia. We're not even five minutes into the third quarter. Another shot on Higgins is turned aside as this third quarter starting a lot like the first quarter did with a lot of end-to-end -end action. Matt Rambo will work his way into the corner. Played catch with Reardon coming off the bench and they will start to set up. Rambo trying to work off Reardon. Now he'll feed it behind the net near side Matisse. Matisse comes around, tried to roll it off to Hickey, but that one hit a man in the corner, and they battle for it there. Shot clock violation, and we have a timeout on the floor with 9.50 left to go in this third quarter. Wings up by five, seven to two. Wings lead the Rochester Nighthawks 7-2 here in the third quarter. Wings have a special member of their roster tonight, and our Devin Caney has more downstairs. Thanks, Brian. The Wings gained a very special new teammate tonight, 15-year-old cancer patient Luca DiBartolomeo became a member of the Wings tonight. He was greeted by the team. He had his own customized locker stall with the number 21. Might I add, he shares that with assistant captain Kevin Crowley, who's seen here suiting him up with Trevor Baptiste. He had the full pads. They got him a stick. They brought him in for a huddle. He was one of the team, and Coach Paul Day told him that he was resilient and he represented everything that the team should be about. And you can see he's got some uh, pretty good skills on the floor. So I don't know. His energy may or may not be the reason why the Wings are up seven to two right now, guys. And the thank you, Devin. The Wings welcoming into Barlomeo a Malvern Prep freshman. And uh, just a tr tremendous scene to see that tonight. It really was. It was great. Just shows what th the Wings do with the community. And and uh, Luca is a, is a freshman at Malvern Prep. He actually plays lacrosse for that team. Plays for former Philadelphia Wing champion John McAvoy, who uh, honored him at Malvern Prep. Just a great story. Great job by the Wings. And he's having a fantastic time tonight. Hopefully he'll be able to call this one a win here in his experience with the team tonight as the Wings have the 7-2 lead. And then they are now working with 16 on the shot clock as Buchanan tries to get away from the defender. Now off the Courier, he scores! Matt Rambo finds Josh Courier up high, and he scores down low. It's 8-2 Philadelphia. Keep saying it, but it's Courier never stops moving the energy of this guy. He just continues to circle the net. Here he comes up, up top, comes off a pick, just catches that, releases on the run, beats Fryer down low. What a great goal by Courier. He's a guy that never stops moving on the offense. Again, we talked about him in the open. Four goals, four assists, last home game. Again, he answers the bell right there. Beautiful goal by Josh Courier. We've got two guys going to the penalty box before this face-off for some uh, shenanigans to our right. This is not 
Philadelphia, number 12. The first time. Number 96. Minor penalties each for dead ball contact. These guys were pushing and shoving before the last faceoff and did so again here. So Corey Highfield goes in along with Liam Patton for Philadelphia. They decide to put an end to that. Mike Hasey not too happy about that, but again, he's got a scrappy team. No matter whether it's during play or just on the faceoff, they're playing to the end. We haven't talked about it too much, but uh, these two head coaches are pretty good friends. Mike Hasey and Paul Day have worked together a lot over the years, both in Rochester and in Peterborough, Ontario. So it's always a treat for these two guys to coach against each other. No doubt about it. They've won championships in Rochester 94, 05, 11, and 16. They've known each other for you know, pretty much their entire career. They're two of the best coaches in this league. Let's go downstairs to our Devin Caney. Yeah, you guys mentioned uh, Mike Hasen and Paul Day's relationship, and the two go way, way back. They actually celebrated New Year's Eve together. They're pretty close friends coaching-wise. They've played together as well. And when I asked Coach Day if that would impact his mindset going into the game, he said, no, it's all business. I asked him if he and Mike had spoken to each other today. He said he sent him a text late last night wishing him good luck, but uh, he might give him a little look on the bench, but probably stick to business. Thank you very much, Devin. As we saw there, Dan Lintner with a shot that almost made it through, or almost stayed out, I should say. It was a tremendous st stop by Higgins, but unfortunately just rolled away from him at the last second. Yeah, Coach Day will give him a scowl on this one, but look at the upfield pass. B tries to bury it five hole. Hickey gets a piece of it. I'm sorry, Higgins gets a piece of it, but it just rolls over that goal line. Nice goal by Dan Lintner to push it up the floor. That's a goal. And we are going to get a challenge on this as Paul Day has seen something that he wants to have a second look at. Okay, let's remember that the ball has to cross uh -huh. the, the line before the player steps in the crease. He, Coach Paul Day might have something to say as he looks at his friend across the bench. So we'll see how this comes out. Uh, again, we were talking about a lot of uh, a, a lot of relationships between these two teams. Sean Evans and Corey Vitarelli are pretty good friends. They grew up together in Peterborough. And Paul Day played for Sean Evans' dad when he was a player. So the way it works here in the National Lacrosse League is the referees will come into the penalty box there and get a look at the a video and we see a foot on the line right there and that ball is in the air it's a matter of whether or not it has broken the plane there is an imaginary plane from the white line up to the red bar ball Let, is in the air left foot's out but let's watch this right foot right there and the ball is behind Lintner more of what we had last night when <laughs> the review was inconclusive because of people in the way of that foot but right there I think is might be the telling angle that ball crosses the line right there but that's well after Lintner would have had to put his foot down in order to not have levitated through the crease really a tough call here has to be conclusive one thing that they didn't have last night in New England was that overhead shot which easily would have been called in the crease it was the, the bright or bright green shoes of Callum Crawford that you would think you would be able to see it on a white line from almost any angle, but just so happened you couldn't because of uh, bodies in the way and the angle of the camera. Uh, this is a similar situation. We'll get one more look here from the overhead as Higgins makes the initial stop. The momentum of Lintner continues on. Right there is where we think that foot is on the ground, and that ball has not crossed that white line as of yet. That's the shot that we're looking at. There you go. You see his right foot touch down before that ball crosses the line. Those two cameras are synced up. We have a decision, and we will get an answer. After review, the shooter steps inside the crease prior to the ball crossing the line. No goal. So a successful challenge from Paul Day draws a smile. And the score will remain 8-2 to two, Philadelphia. That's a good enforcement of the rules right there. That's why we have instant replay. Great call by Paul Day to reverse that goal. 
even a better call by the referees to get it right. So Philadelphia takes possession with 8.06 left to go in this third quarter, up by six, eight to two, 44 shots on goal already for the Wings. Crowley tried to feed a pass right of the net, but it was intercepted, and here come the Nighthawks the other way. In transition, a shot stopped by Higgins, and the rebound is controlled. Philadelphia now with an opportunity in transition, but Hickey will just slow it up and feed some of his teammates coming off the bench. Here's Kevin Crowley on the near side, working his way free. Get it off to Vitarelli, who continued it around. Now back to Vitarelli, and a save made by Fryer, who was expecting that. Got to that far post and able to seal it off. Really nice vision by Philadelphia to see that Vitarelli uh, set up down low. Crowley tried to get it. Nice save by Fryer. Here's Catoni with nine to shoot. Maneuvering toward the net, now will spin away, looking for a feed. Coming back out toward the wall. Now Littner with a shot, that one wide. And the shot clock expires, wings take over. Kyle Matisse directing traffic as the wings will get set up. Work by Rambo off the right side, we've got a moving pick whistled against Philadelphia. Rochester gets the ball going the other way. Here's Dylan Evans. Leaves it off for Sean Evans. No relation between those two, but Sean Evans and Turner Evans are cousins. As Turner Evans maneuvers his way in, got the shot away, it's stopped by Higgins. And here comes Philadelphia out of their own end. Isaiah Davis Allen sees nothing but white at the far end of the floor, so he will hang out, wait for his teammates to come out. Now leave himself as Brett Hickey works on the left wing. Plays to the near side for Crowley up top. Now feeds it off for Rambo. Rambo trying to work free of a man. Does so, shot, whistled wide of the net. Nice pick was set there, freed Rambo up for a moment, but he couldn't get the shot on goal. Rambo's got zero goals with four assists. He's certainly helping out his teammates, but he's trying to get in the scoring column, taking his shots. Turner Evans feeds it far side. This is Knight. Dishes it off. Sean Evans faked the shot, now takes the shot, and it's picked up by Higgins, who continues to keep the door shut. Rochester has not scored since early in the second quarter. Coming the other way, it's Josh Courier trying to juke his way free. He'll turn off and feed it to Crowley. The far side, this is Buchanan with it. Buchanan tried to roll off a pass. That one missed the mark, comes to Crowley. Shot clock winding down. Crowley gets it away, and it's stopped by Fryer. He's able to dive on top of it and regain possession. We've got a timeout on the floor with 4.47 left to go in this third quarter. It's 8-2 Philadelphia. Two wings with the lead here in the third quarter. Next weekend, the NLL Game of the Week comes right here to the Wells Fargo Center as Trevor Baptiste and the Wings hosts Connor Kelly and the Riptide in an East Division matchup. Catch all the action on BR Live, Twitter, and Facebook starting at 6.30 Eastern Time. Another tremendous evening tonight for Trevor Baptiste in the circle and on the offensive end. Let's take a look at it. Set of the goal here is the assist. Takes it. Coast to coast, smart play, protecting that ball. Gets it in front of the net, draws the defender, just jams it over his shoulder. Great play, as you see an assist, then you see a goal by number nine, Trevor Baptiste. 75% on draws this year coming in. He's better than that tonight, 10 of 13. And still contributing on the offensive side of things. Tremendous pickup for the Wings in their first season. And just blossoming here in season number two. Rochester with possession as we get back going with four and a half left to go in this third quarter. And the ball pops free into the stick of Zach Higgins. Wings will look to exit their end. Charbonneau able to outrun a man. We get a whistle though and a 
violation has the ball going Rochester's way, but great hustle by Charbonneau to get in the way of a headman pass, and he gets the ball back. Thought it was going to be a turnover right away, but Charbonneau there at the right place at the right time, knocking down that pass, creating a turnover in an offensive situation. Great play by Steph Charbonneau. For hockey fans, Paul Day likens Steph Charbonneau to Brad Marchand, and the way he plays this game, how much of a pest he is. Wings love to have him as Crowley tried to feed it out in front. It was just out of the reach of Blaze Reardon. Wings regained possession and they get the shot away as the time was winding down. Rochester will control that one coming out the other way. On the right wing is Doug Udding. Feeds Bennett coming from top. Bennett gets it back. Thought about a shot, but he is decked. He did not see that train coming off the Wings bench. And now we've got a scrum on the near side going after the loose ball as it was Ryan Wagner that came right through Matthew Bennett's shot clock violation gives the Wings the ball. What a play. Ryan Wagner, number 94, look at it. Head down, don't put your head down in lacrosse. Ryan Wagner's coming into a race shoe. Great defense by 94. That guy's just been tremendous on defense so far this year for the Wings. All over the place, great techniques, great speed, athleticism. Love the play of Ryan Wagner. Buchanan lost the ball as he tried to work away from the defender. It's tied up at the referee's feet, but Vitarelli gets that back with six to shoot. Fed it off to Josh Currier, and he just abandons it. I'm not sure if he thought there was a little less time on the shot clock, but Wings will just back off, and Rochester will take over. Nighthawks trying to get back on the board. They have not scored in quite some time, and Turner Evans feeds a pass a little out of the reach here. Sharpno coming the other way. He gets knocked down. We've got a penalty coming up against Rochester, and we'll get a whistle as it comes into the possession of Fryer, a tripping call. And the Wings are headed back on the power play. Look at the speed of Charbonneau puts on the Jets. Knight tries to get a little one-handed wrap, but he trips up Charbonneau. Charbonneau looked like he's going to get breakaway goal, but a little wrap by Knight. It's going to put the Wings on the power play. So that'll put the wings back up a man here for two minutes with 2.20 left to go in the third quarter. So they could spend most of the rest of this period on the power play unless they're successful pretty quick. Here's Crowley working with Kyle Matisse. Back to Crowley. Crowley feeds it right side. Shot stopped by Fryer. Rebound is loose. It is swatted down the floor, Wings are gonna go get it. Nice penalty kill by Rochester, great play by Philadelphia. Tease tried to skip pass it over Vitarelli with a one time, but Fryer was there with the save. Great save by Fryer. They'll set up again with a minute 28 left on the power play. Matisse to the right side, Vitarelli back to Matisse. Feeds it into the right side of the crease and over the back pass was off the mark. Wings get it back though. Matisse with a shot and a save made. Rochester will control that loose ball. Minute 11 left to go on the power play. Here's Bennett down the right side, shot away, save made by Higgins. And he will pull that ball out of his right leg pad. Crowley has it at center. With 56 seconds left in the man up situation. They're trying to get Vitarelli down on that left-hand post. He's kind of posting up lower, on that lower angle goal on extended, see if he can get that quick stick. Crowley, another cross-court pass looking for Reardon, but it was out of his reach. And Rochester will take over 35 seconds left in the man-up situation. Just a little bit more time than that left in the period. And Hutting is just going to waste some time here on the right side. He's got 16 to shoot. Thought about moving in. Rochester not really in a position where they can just waste time. They need to score some goals here. Hutting taking a beating, throws it over his shoulder, stopped by Higgins. And now the Wings will come out. Just eight seconds left on the man advantage. The shot clock and the game clock are almost identical, about a two-second difference. 
Wings could play for last shot here, depending on when they take it. Matisse is going to slow it down as Knight is released from the box. So Rochester back to full strength. First time the Wings have not capitalized on the power play opportunity tonight. But still working here with 10 seconds left to go in the period. Pass rebounds to Crowley, got the shot away, and it bounces up over the glass and out of play, but it will be Philadelphia ball, so Higgins is going to go to the bench, and the Wings will send out an extra attacker with 4.1 seconds left in the third quarter. Not much time to do anything. Look for a pass and a shot. They are going to chat about how much time should be on the clock. We'll see what the number ends up being. They're going to increase it to 5.4 seconds on the clock. And refs are calling it tight. Ooh, right before that. Looks like Thomas Woody got a little slap. Number 20, check. minor penalty, slashing. So what we can see here is play actually started a little early. It started before they were able to get that time up on the clock. And during that time, that slashing penalty was called. Rochester penalty to number 20. Yeah, it's Matt Bennett slashing. with a little slash in Rochester front. So here we go, Bennett. final five Two seconds. Pass down low is out of the reach of a Wings attacker, and that is going to do it for the third quarter, or will it? Some greetings being exchanged as the Nighthawk has a hold of Kevin Crowley's face mask. Paul Dawson and Kevin Crowley going at it. Two guys that look at each other eye to eye, couple six foot four. Bruisers. Paul Dawson's a defensive leader and captain for Rochester. Wings will have the power play when we come back. They lead it eight to two over the Rochester Nighthawks after three quarters of action here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Philadelphia Wings hold an 8-2 lead on the Rochester Nighthawks as we head into the fourth quarter tonight here at the Wells Fargo Center on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Hey, Flyers fans, always stay connected to your orange and black with the NBC Sports Philadelphia.com and the My Teams app. Two Cup. Nighthawks in the box right now. Captain Paul Day and Bennett, or Paul Dawson, excuse me, and Bennett. So that exchange we saw at the end of the third quarter resulting in another penalty for Rochester. And for the second time tonight, the Philadelphia Wings have a five on three advantage. And this time it could last for almost a full two minutes if they needed it to. They scored pretty quickly after they got set up last time. We'll see what they can do here. Blaze Reardon with the ball on the near side. Reardon backing up. Feeds it down low, back to Reardon, and a save made by Fryer. That was a set play, but Fryer up to the task, kept Reardon at bay. Always so difficult to stop that five on three. The wings pulled out Matisse, so it was really a four on three to give a lot of room to the offensive players. Good stop by Rochester. Two wings trying to hunt down Sean Evans on the near side, and we got a whistle and another penalty off the ball. Is this going to be a Rochester penalty? Because if it is, we've got a penalty shot. Have a seat. It is. We have a nice warm seat. They may have here. two guys going in. <laughs> We're going to have a little party in the penalty box, but the Philadelphia Wings are going to get. A penalty shot opportunity because by NLL rules, when you've got two players in the box and the third penalty is called, that's what happens. Rochester penalty number five, minor penalty roughing. By rule, both of those equal a penalty shot. We will have two penalty shots. Two of them. I was wondering that. Wow. <laughs> if it was one or two, so the two penalties after Rochester, the ones that had already been Sean called Evans, result Robbie. in two also penalty Rochester, shots. Five, Evans, Evans certainly is known as one of the chippier players Robbie. in this league, five, never Turner taking Evans. any guff whatsoever. You saw that clip of him giving that blind shot to Charbonneau right in the face. Looks like they're going to give Kevin Crowley the penalty shot. Well, you don't see this every day. We saw it in. The last Wings home game of last season that this happened to Calgary to the Wings benefit. Here's Crowley moving in. Hold, shoot, scores! Kevin Crowley converts on penalty shot number one. 
And that makes it 9 2 Philadelphia. Kevin Crowley takes the boys a couple big fakes, gets him high. Fryer stands up a little bit. Crowley buries it low. Look at the stick work and the fakes. He goes to that glove side. Now it's Kyle Matisse with number two. Going wide is Matisse. Comes back out in front. Fakes, shoots. Save made by Fryer. Matisse looked like he tried to do a reprise of his goal earlier in this game where he kind of spun around and shot from an odd angle, but this time Fryer comes up with it. Yep, tried the twister here, a couple fakes, comes past the goal, tries to beat him five hole. Big save by Fryer. Looks like almost the exact same move, just take the defenseman away that Matisse was successful on earlier. So, the two penalty shots are done. Two players remain in the penalty box. As you see, Paul Dawson questioning the wisdom of this situation that his team finds himself in. But the Wings now have a five on three still for two full minutes at the moment. 9-2 the score. Wings up by seven. And still just under 14 minutes of fun left here in this one as Kyle Matisse sets up top. On the near side, Vitarelli off to Rambo. Back behind the back and across. Crease pass intended for Vitarelli, knocked away. Now here's Rambo. Back to Vitarelli. Shot saved, made by Fryer. Rebound loose in the corner. Vitarelli trying to fight for it. Dylan Evans comes in there to kick it free for Rochester, but Matt Rambo is able to push it back out to Matisse. And a fresh 30. Wings are trying to get that little quick stick on that lower low hand shot. Vitarelli got the ball back and it got Rambo to the far side. Courier back to Rambo now near side Vitarelli shot goes into the corner. It was blocked so the shot clock does not reset four seconds to shoot Rambo fires that one also blocked Vitarelli sent to the turf. As the shot clock expires, Rochester gains possession. 50 seconds left in these penalties that happened at the same time. Rochester really packing it down on defense. And also some nice saves by Fryer. Short-handed Katoni moving in. One-handed shot was wide, and the Wings will get to that loose ball. It's not quite controlled yet by Wagner. But he's finally able to get to it and pull it free for Kyle Matisse. 21 seconds left to go in the man up situation. Less than that on the shot clock. Blaze Reardon near side. Vitarelli cross crease pass and a goal. Brent Hickey set up to the left of the net. Converts the pass and the wing's now up 10 to 2. Almost a carbon copy of the last goal that Hickey did. Look at him, he's straddling that goal line extended on that lower right-hand side, waiting for that push pass, reaches around, beats Fryer to that near pipe. Reardon passes down. Vitarelli right across one timer. Great goal. Carbon copy by Vitarelli. I'm sorry, Vitarelli to Hickey. Second goal tonight, great goal by number 11. Wings will still have a little bit of power play time here as one man is released from the box. Sean, uh, Turner Evans is still in there, but he's about ready to come out with five seconds left on that penalty. Reese controls in center for the Nighthawks. Now he'll depart, leaves the ball off for Lindner. Five power play goals tonight for Philadelphia. That's equaling as many as they've had all season. What a night on the power play. Long shot from Katoni is turned away by Higgins. And here comes Trevor Baptiste. Baptiste looking to wind up. Didn't have a lane. Now he'll go behind the net with it. Baptiste plays it off for Josh Courier, and he will depart. Matt Rambo on the right side. Try to move. Backs off. Looking to dish it off the rear to just out of his reach. Ball still on the ground, and the shot clock goes off. It's Rochester ball going the other way. Near side is Lintner, winds and fires. Save made by Higgins, he got enough to direct it wide. Rochester still in control as Katoni plays it off to the right side.
Rochester trying to get one back through. They have not scored since about the eight minute mark of the second quarter. Only goal they've had so far was disallowed. Another shot whistles wide in that from Sean Evans, and the Wings control that. Yeah, I can't say enough about this defense from Philadelphia. Goaltending, good D equals good O. Goal, Philadelphia. The hat trick for Brent Hickey off the bench in transition. Buries it low, it's 11-2 wins. It all starts with the defensive end, pushing the transition, but it's Brett Hickey shooting the box from the front door. One catch, little fake, buries it. Beats Fryer, great goal by Hickey. Crowd enjoying themselves here as the Wings now out to a nine goal lead. Credit to Joe Carlini for his excellent job opening that door for Brett Hickey you got to it. get out for his hat trick. That front door. Three on the night for Brett Hickey. Great job. Just perfect offense. Great defense leads to great offense, and the Philadelphia Wings have a beautiful goal because of great defense. Lintner tried to feed it over the top. It was out of the reach of its intended recipient, Caputo. Rochester regains control, though, and now they finally score. Curtis Knight from up high beats Higgins down low. And Rochester, for the first time in almost two full quarters, gets on the board. It's 11-3. Curtis Knight, well, we're wondering when number nine was going to get on the board. He had a big night last night with three goals and three assists, so he finally gets it tonight. Great outside shot, sets up. Looks like he beats Sicky. I'm sorry, Higgins low over that shoulder. Nice shot by Curtis Knight. So with just over 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, Rochester gets back on the board. 11 to three is the score, and now we've got some more physical play going on and another delayed penalty coming up here against Rochester as Trevor Baptiste is slow to get up. He is to his stick now as he was dispossessed of it by a hit that was laid on from a man coming from the uh, wings end of the floor that I think is gonna be the one that gets the penalty. Wings still operating here on the delayed call. Seven to shoot. Near side, now up top. Hickey with a shot and a save made by Fryer. And we get the whistle. And the wings are headed back up a man when we come back. Timeout on the floor with 9.51 left in the fourth quarter. 11-3 wings. Rochester Pelly, number 34, five minutes, illegal body check. Loss in New England, and they are headed back on the power play. This is going to be a five-minute major, Scott. Yes, it is. Watch number 34. He's the one that's going to get the penalty. Watch Baptiste taking an elbow to the head. Baptiste is a defenseless player. Buddy's just coming straight in, taking him out. Little hip check. And fortunately on, uh, fortunately, on the second angle, we see that it didn't hit him in the head. I thought the same thing you did, that that was to the head. Uh, but uh, fortunately for Baptiste, it didn't catch him there. But still, the force of that results in the five-minute major. Bring your team or organization to a Wings game for a one-of-a-kind experience. Groups are eligible for special pricing and exclusive opportunities to be a part of Wings games. Find out more about group tickets and fundraising by calling 215-952-LAX1 or visit wingslax.com. So a five-minute major, the Wings can score three times on this power play before Utting would be released. Or, of course, till the end of the power play. First attempt was turned aside by Fryer, and the Nighthawks will come back out. Wings in control here. They are up by eight. Zach Higgins was able to keep Rochester off the board for almost two full quarters. He has had a tremendous weekend for Philadelphia. Here's Bickle, one-hander around the corner, tried to surprise Higgins, but he was up for that one. And the Wings will take over. Yeah, Higgins is having one heck of a night. He's only given up three goals. We've got a timeout here as the uh, officials discuss a matter with the clock operator. 
so we'll get this straightened out. But, uh, you know, that game last night in New England, Scott, we talked about it. Uh, one of those things that just leaves a bad taste in your mouth, the way the game ended for the Wings. But it was just such a great back and forth battle in the fourth quarter. Doug Jamison would make a save. Zach Higgins would make a save. And it just ended up going the New England Black Wolves way. And you see here, the Wings had a three-game winning streak going into that. They could have taken over first place with a win. As a result, though, the New England Black Wolves up a game and a half on the Wings coming into tonight. But they can make some of that up here. Yep, and they played the New England Black Wolves a few more times this season. So at least they know what they're up against now. They feel they've got one stolen from them up in New England. They're going to get them back home for a game. And, and the Wings have great confidence here at home in Philadelphia. You, you know, this Philadelphia faithful, this fan base is so great for the Philadelphia Wings. A great place to watch a game. Hey, Philly Authentic fans, have you downloaded the My Teams app yet? Get stories, stats, exclusive video, and more right from your phone. Download now and always stay connected to your teams. Great place to come down. Joint chopper in the stands, leading the WI NGS Wings. Cheers. Let's hear it, Wings fans. And you get to see some physical play like we've seen tonight. This Rochester team is brand new and getting together, but a lot of these players know each other, and they don't like each other tonight. No, sir. And this at this point in the game, the fourth quarter, you know, man down a five-minute penalty, 11 to three. It gets chippy. If you're a wing, you've got to keep your head up because Rochester's coming to hunting. Kevin Crowley trying to lumberjack that ball free. He could not quite get a stick on it though and now a two on one the other way for Rochester shorthanded shot whistles just wide of the net and a long rebound off the end boards goes out of play wings will be able to take over the other way they've got three and three minutes and 50 seconds left to go on this five minute major but we've got some more being called here oh, okay one of those attempts by Kevin Crowley to get that ball was a slash he took about five or six swings at it Wings penalty to number 21, Kevin Crowley. Two minutes for slashing. Wings so the number 21, Kevin game Crowley. will go to two minutes slashing. Four on four for a little bit here. There's two minutes on the board for Crowley as we see that slash on Highfield. Four. Looks there like a couple more after defense that. to me. <laughs> yeah. That's what you do in the cross. That's right. He's just going for the ball, right? So four on four here is Lindner with a drive and a save made by Higgins. And now some more action and we're gonna get a fight finally as things boil over. It's Steph Charbonneau and Sean Evans. And they go to the floor. Officials move in to finish this off. Charbonneau, we talked about him being a pest and Sean Evans had just had enough of it. And that's Evans' reputation, too. He's got a short fuse right there. He goes at it all the time. He just mix it up with Steph Charbonneau. Charbonneau so valuable to this Wings team for so many other things than scoring or other offensive stats that you might see. As we get a look at how this developed, you see him going at each other there at the top of the crease, and Evans just drops the gloves and grabs the mask. Charbonneau wasn't even looking at him when Evans started the whole thing, I don't think. Nope, he wanted to go. Charbonneau's got the, his chin strap buckled tight. A lot of guys in this league do not have that chin strap buckled tight. They just let that helmet loose. Evans tried to rip it off Charbonneau. So our officials will discuss things. Todd LeBranch, Andrew Ecclestone, and Josh Hiltz are on the field tonight. Luke Vrankin is the 30-second shot clock official, and they are earning their keep tonight. As these players are Rochester keeping busy. Number 15, a minor penalty for roughing, an additional minor penalty for roughing. Philadelphia number 18, minor penalty for roughing. So the extra minor goes to Evans, and... 
think that's a fair description of what happened. It looked like a fight from where we were standing, but uh, once you get a look at it in, in close proximity, you see it was uh, more grappling. Yeah, that's for sure. Sean Evans. <laughs> Two minor penalties for roughing. Unprovoked. Rochester penalty to number 15. Evans, Sean Evans wanted a piece of him. Two minor penalties I will admit that I have no idea Wings what to tell you as far as what the penalty Charbonneau. situation is going to be here as we progress, roughing. but we can Wings tell you that it is another five-on-three situation right now for the Wings. There's 3.33 left in that initial major. Now two minutes on the board for Evans. Still a minute 40 up for Kevin Crowley, but... Uh, Four on three, excuse me. It's a wings power play. Let's make some Here's Kyle noise. Matisse near side to rear to now for Vitarelli and his shot whistled wide. Matisse will go get that loose ball with 15 seconds left to go on the shot clock. Near side, here's Reardon. Dishes it off to Vitarelli. Eight to shoot. They move it around. Here's Matisse. Up top. Over the shoulder shot stopped by Fryer. Vitarelli getting fancy. But Fryer was right there. Trying to spread the offense out, or the defense out, the offense right in front, behind the back by Vitarelli. Fryer eats it up. Here's Caputo with possession, and Rochester will just try to wind some time down here, but they're down by eight goals, so again, they can't really afford to just eat clock. Knight trying to work free. Shot was wide of the net, bounces out of play. Wings will take over. So in 38 seconds, the Wings will get a man back. That'll be Crowley. They should have about a five on a five on three for about 15 seconds or so. And then they will continue with the power play on the major. Here's Rambo. Leads one down, far side. That shot just missed. Wings retain possession. Rambo feeds Hickey. He scores. Brett Hickey, his fourth of the game. Down low on Fryer. 12-3 wings. Brad Hickey feeling it. Brad Hickey feeling it. See the ball movement. Hickey's just up top, sets his feet, just buries it along that right pipe. Take a look at it. Time, room, bang, goal. Nice job for Brad Hickey, his fourth of the night. Got shut out last night in New England. Bounce back real quick. Very strong tonight with four goals. Here's they credited that goal against the major. Scored by number 11, Brett. So the power play situation remains the same. Except we are now at five on four. Nope, now they update the scoreboard. So that did go against the minor. So that removes Sean Evans. So it's four on four for a moment. Now Crowley's out. That makes it five on four. Here's Corey Vitarelli right side. Feeds one up top. Courier a shot save made. Fryer just again just lets his leg pads do the job there. And no rebound. Here's Thomas Witte up the floor. Witte scored his first goal as a pro last night. Feeds it off. We've got a delayed penalty coming up here against Philadelphia. Shot in on that set at the end boards, and the rebound is grabbed and put home. Opportunistic for Phil Caputo, right place, right time. 12 4 now is our score. Whatever that penalty is will be wiped off. Let's take a look at it. Tony takes a shot. Looks like a save, a little errant off the boards. Almost could be a plan, set play. Caputo takes it off the boards, one times it with a goal. So there was a delayed penalty coming up against Philadelphia. I'm not sure what it was for. The officials are discussing the situations right now as the captains stand by. And I believe we have an explanation coming up. The goal stands. The goal stands. So Rochester with its second goal of the quarter, and it's now a 12-4 game. Well, the Wings are back here at the Wells Fargo Center for a couple of more games here in January. This Friday against the New York Riptide. Georgia Swarm in on the 31st.
And then they'll head back on the road for a pair. Another back-to-back -back Buffalo Bandits and the New England Black, Black Wolves. This time, the second game of the back-to-back -back before they come back home on February the 22nd for the Saskatchewan Rush. And again, uh, Scott, we're talking about that New England game in particular, is that's gonna be an interesting one with those two teams hovering around the top of this new division. Yes, division rivals, without a doubt. It's great to have New York back in the mix. Franchise back in New York, New York Riptide. Taking over the New York Saints expansion team coming in Friday night. Be the NLL game of the week. We'll be our live. We'll have it for you here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. As the Wings play a home heavy month in January after playing their first three games on the road. Wings trying to get some more here as we have under six to play in the fourth. They're up 12 to four. Shot stopped by Fryer. And the rebound. Briefly handled by Rochester, but it ends up on the stick of Matt Rambo, and the Wings will get the chance to reset. Power play time still winding down. 30 seconds left on that five-minute major. Doug Udding. Rylan Reese doesn't even have a stick on the floor right now. Playing man down without a stick in his hand. It seems like an oversight, but the Wings try to get that backdoor play. It was stopped by Fryer. And now the Nighthawks will equip the floor with four players that have sticks as Evans works around behind the net. Here's Turner Evans, dishes it off, now gets it back, gets the shot away, and it whistled wide of the net. Long rebound comes across the center line, and it is whistled dead as that would be an over and back. Out of the box comes Udding, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 4.53 left to go in the fourth quarter. Wings lead it 12-4. We've all been waiting for. Let's announce the winner of tonight's 50-50. If you're 50-50. Four. Our play of the game presented by Geico goes to the captain, Kyle Matisse. Let's take a look at it. The do-it-all player for the Philadelphia Wings wearing the C on his jersey, 46 Matisse, coast to coast, coming in, the twister for the goal. Another look at it here, Matisse almost loses it. No, controls, twists in, a goal and a beauty for the Geico play of the game. And that's my favorite part about that goal is that shot that Evans got in on the stick of Matisse. Somehow he kept hold of that ball. And he was able to finish it off. What a leader he's been for this team. From day one, he has been uh, the backbone of this organization, and uh, it's flourishing right now. Yeah, great leader. The Wings sit here, 12-4. Looking to get their second win at home. Nothing like playing in front of the Philly faithful, the Wells Fargo Center. Just a great game. The Wings are playing with great confidence. Incredibly athletic team this year. Veteran leadership, good youth, but just great experience across offense, defense, transition, and goaltending. For the first time in a while, we're back to five on five action. As the Wings work it around, a shot bounces up out of play. Rochester Nighthawks have 33 minutes in penalties in this game so far. And, you know, even, even when you're not a tired team, that's going to wear you down. On the near side, it's Sean Evans. Try to skip pass that nobody was expecting. It goes off the far boards, and Charbonneau runs it down, and he gets hog-tied, and now slashed from behind as he lays there. Something's going to be called there, I would suspect. Yep, Turner Evans try to get that one-handed wrap. Caught Charbonneau up under the chin. Easy call. And then Evans just giving him the business afterwards, too. Rochester Kelly, number five, two minutes, holding. You holding see the by continuation the of that play. Evans, Sean Evans, starts hacking him after he's down, too. Look at the one-handed wrap. Takes him down. There's two your hold. But holding. then look at Sean Evans Rochester just penalty, five, giving him the business Evans, afterwards. Two minutes for holding. As he falls to the, the ground, Charbonneau the had the ball. It bounced Let's away. Evans just... Started hacking away at him. I assume he thought the ball was under there. That's a slash, folks. Kevin Crowley was playing defense. Sean Evans was just slashing. That's the third minor of the night against Turner Evans as the Wings go back into the man up situation. 348 and ticking left to go in this fourth quarter. Wings up 12 to 4. Blaze Reardon will set things up. Lays it off to Matisse, tried to find Courier on the left side, couldn't complete the pass. And it comes to Fryer, who will send it up. 
Dylan Evans. The Evans that has seen the uh, perhaps the least amount of controversy tonight, although he also got a penalty earlier. Left it off for Lintner. Here's Lintner going to the net. Now he peels off behind the crease. Still looking for a passing lane with six to shoot. Gets a pass off. And Gatoni's shot went wide. Picked up by Lintner, and he'll try to fire for almost half field. Goes well wide, and now some more pleasantries being exchanged by Sean Evans in front of the wing's net after the shot clock expired. And now Evans is going to go with somebody out in front. We've got a couple of players from each side involved here. That's Ian Lord down there that was going with Evans in the first place. And then another altercation broke out to their right. And now a Nighthawk player gets a glove in on the face of Zach Higgins. Fryer is trotting the midfield. He's thinking about getting involved, but the officials tell him to not even think about it. I believe that's Lord down there that's been relieved of his jersey. It's Pace. Pace the rookie. Yes, it is Alex Pace now that we can get a look at him. Paul Dawson, one of the toughest guys in this league. Ian Lord right up there with him, number 29. Again, these two teams are both in the back half of a back-to-back -back tonight. And Rochester, in ill humor, as Sean Evans interacts with the fans. And Chopper, who's there to greet him as he comes into the penalty box. Paul Dawson used to play for the Philadelphia Wings years ago. There's a clip of a knockout punch that he, is, he made back then. He's a guy you don't want to mess with. But the rookie pace. Got undressed a little bit. Love the fire, the Philadelphia Wings playing at home. Welcome to Philadelphia, Alex Pace. Alex Pace got his first professional goal last night. He's getting some more first professional events here tonight. We get a look at how this all developed, and there's Sean Evans right in the center of all of it. Ian Lord. Took exception to some of what Evans was doing. And then you've got Pace there to his right. Now Lord comes down on Evans, and that set it off. And then Dawson gets in it with Pace. Just shows the fearlessness of Evans. Ian Lord is one of the toughest guys in this league. He's noticed it for sir. And Evans isn't going to mess around. And there comes Paul Dawson, too, just undressing Pace. Great action. Great defense by Philadelphia. And then you see Pace there, whose jersey was pretty much removed by Dawson. Again, just some wrestling in there, and then eventually Higgins got involved. Could have been bad there. I think Paul Dawson took the high road, did not use one of those overhand tomahawk punches like he's known for. And for a moment there, Fryer had trotted out to midfield. But he was uh, warned back by one of the officials. So we will sort this out and figure out exactly how the final three minutes and six seconds of this game are going to proceed. Wings were up a man when this all broke out. Still a minute left on the initial penalty to Turner Evans. Not much room in that penalty box for Rochester. Got three Nighthawks in there right now. And you see Evans talking to the fans and Chopper among them as he heads to the box. There's almost as many people in the penalty boxes as there are on the field. Four minutes for roughing. Also, Rochester number two, Paul Dawson, four minutes for roughing. So, two Which double minors for roughing Ian Lord, on the Rochester side. And number 41, Alex Pace, four minutes for roughing. So, everybody gets four minutes for roughing. Rochester penalty, Sean Evans, four minutes for roughing. Number two, Paul Dawson, four minutes for roughing. Wings penalties. And the result on the floor will Ian be Lord the same with a minute left to go on the power 41, play. Alex Pace. Sean Evans been, has been playing in this league for 15 years, and he still has the fire in him. 
to go at one of the toughest guys in the league. Just let you know why he's been playing for so long and still a productive member of this team. Hit 1,200 career points two games ago in Toronto, did Sean Evans. Averages 5.17 points per game over a 15-year career. That is not bad. Wings on the power play. As we wind down here in the fourth quarter, Rambo to Matisse now with it. Matisse with a shot, and a save was made by Fryer. And the ball is loose. Wings are going to get it back. We're going to go downstairs to our Devin Caney in just a moment. But we have more on-field incidents here as Josh Courier has been tackled after a hit that he laid on a member of the Nighthawks and Julian Garitano came from great distance to take exception to that. Yes, he did. Garitano came at him like a D-back free safety. Just took out Courier on the fly. So Courier and Garitano will join the party in the penalty box, and we'll get a look here at the hit. Courier coming from behind, and he got a stick up high on one of the Nighthawks. So a little wrap, head down, look out, here it comes. There's Garitano. You get a better look at the run up here. His courier, after he did that, went back over and said something yep. to Thomas Whitty. Talking a little smack there by Courier, and then Courier made the mistake of keeping his head down. And then there was the free safety hit by Garitano. That would seem to me that something might have precipitated that a little bit earlier on as Whitty had to be held back from getting involved in that as well. Referee doing whatever he can to prevent Witty from getting in there and creating more trouble. Paul Day and the coaching staff looking on as it is a full house on the penalty box side of the field. A two minute unsportsmanlike conduct and a 10 minute misconduct. So Garitano is obviously done. Philadelphia number 27, two minutes for holding. Rochester number 18, two minutes for instigating, five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct. Garitano was the second call there, excuse me. Four guys in the box right now for Rochester. Garitano is going to vacate that box because he's out of this game. So Garitano got 2 5 in the game for that run that he took. And he will depart. Five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct. Rochester penalty number 26, Thomas Witte. Witte was the one that got the earlier penalties. He got the unsportsmanlike and the 10 for. Again, Rochester penalties to number The actions 18, that forced the official to hold him back. He is now making the walk to the locker room as things are explained. Also number 26, Thomas to Kyle Witte. Matisse, Unsports Curtis Knight. And Witte heads off. Wings penalty to number 27, Josh Curry. Curtis Knight, the assistant captain, talked to the referee because the captain's in the box. Wings penalty Paul to number 27, Josh Curry. Scott, I know you had to be on the field for one or two of these. What is it like as a player when you are going through an ending like this? You got to keep your head up. You know that when, when it, your opponent is down by so many goals that there, there's no quit in a team in the professional lacrosse and they're going at it. So no surprise here. Coming up on NLL Post Game Live, highlights and analysis of tonight's game. We'll have all of that for you following our conclusion here today at the Wells Fargo Center. We're going to resume with another penalty shot as all these penalties have added up into another situation where the Wings get a penalty shot rather than extended power play time. Wings penalty shot for number seven. It's going to be Kevin Buchanan on the penalty shot. Buchanan, the 10-year veteran, Ohio State grad, American-born player, fresh legs tonight. Or maybe not. 
<laughs> Buchanan has picked up the ball and is proceeding to the bench. So. Whatever the calculations had to come to after all those penalties, and I don't blame the officials at all because there's a lot to sort out. They thought that it was going to be a penalty shot situation for Philadelphia. It is not. So we are going to go back to ordinary play. There's 240 left on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Wings lead by eight, 12 to four. They have 57 shots on goal in this contest tonight. We're going to resume at five on three for at least 34 seconds. There's seven minutes up on the board. As we get a shot from the right side, Vitarelli was denied by Fryer. Those seven minutes all belong to Julian Garitano, who got the 2-5 in the game. We're going to go downstairs to our Devin Caney. Yeah, this game has uh, undoubtedly been extremely physical, but you have to wonder what Coach Paul Day is thinking given his relationship with Rochester head coach Mike Hazen and Sean Evans. He's known Sean Evans since he was in diapers. He played with Sean Evans' dad, and actually when I was speaking to him before the game, he mentioned that Evans likes to fight a bit. Said that he's matured, though, so, so you do have to wonder how he's feeling. And in terms of the players, you know, you'd think that they'd be fired up watching all of this fighting, but they kind of just look a little disappointed at this point. They're up 12-4. The game's in the back. They look like they just want to get on with it and play lacrosse. Yeah, these guys, both these teams were on the road until very, very early in the morning, about 3 a.m. The wings got in. You can imagine, uh, Scott and Devin, that they're probably ready to get some get some rest after this one wraps up. Yeah, no doubt about it. You got the, the coaches know each other. They have coached their teams to play physical. And really, there is nobody tougher in this league than Sean Evans, even at 5'8". And this is what happens when you're blowing a team out. We're not done yet. This is Dylan Evans and Matt Rambo. Or excuse me, that's uh, Blaze Reardon. No, that is, that is Blaze Reardon down there without the jersey. That got started with a couple of other combatants battling. Doug Utting was in the middle of what started all that, but it ended up being Dylan Evans and Blaze Reardon coming out of it. Reardon had a hold of Utting, and now Evans comes in to pull him off. You ask about what you could do at this time of, you know, of a game when it's really the game's been put away. You just got to protect yourself. We'll see if we can get a call here. Batteries might have run out from being on so much tonight with all <laughs> the action we've had to deal with. Philadelphia penalty, four minutes, roughing. Rochester penalty, two minutes, roughing. We go right ball. All right, they're going to say that I guess Reardon's the one that was to blame for this. Minute 18, these guys just got to keep their heads up. Rochester's going to do nothing but just go down swinging. So that will give Rochester the ball. From what we're seeing on the board, the Wings would actually still be up a player. The Wings were on the, par the power on the play. play. Rochester they were on a two-man. They were on a five-on-three. I think Evans, they were. Two minutes for roughing. Wings so... Rochester's going to get the ball. Kyle Matisse wanted some clarification on something. He has received it as Kyle, or rather Zach Higgins, just looking on through all of this, having had a tremendous evening, 33 saves on 37 shots, provided the goaltending the Wings needed to open up this lead and take advantage of the power play time that they had. And Trevor Baptiste, is serving time for somebody, and he is getting the crowd riled up on his side of the field. It's a lot more fun when you're winning 12-4. So here we go. Knight will start things off. 118 left to go in this one. There are five wings in the penalty box. I can't recall seeing five players in the before. We got three for oh. Rochester in the box. Don't tell the fire marshal. Right. 
Might have some issues. Two Here's guys have already been disqualified and sent to the locker room. Caputo tried to pick the top corner. Missed over the crossbar. Comes back to Evans. Around the shoulder. Stopped by Higgins, and he gets to that loose ball. This is where you go to the circle offense or just four corners. Throw the ball around. Don't even get near anybody. Burn the clock. End this game. There is a delayed penalty on Rochester. We'll see if we get to that point. Not sure there's enough wings on the field right now. Now they add a fourth player. Buchanan thinking about going to the net. Works away from a couple of Rochester defenders. And now we'll just turn it over as the shot clock expired. But that expiration is going to result in calling the penalty. Courier is released from the box. That's Mickle going in. Slashing call on Mickle. Rochester penalty number 23. So 15.4 seconds on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Wings with last possession if they so choose. Like you said, Scott, should just be looking to pass it around. Yeah. And that does appear to be the case. Time's going to wind down, and the Philadelphia Wings are going to win their second home game of the season. They bounce back from the tough loss last night in New England, and they take the victory 12-4. Really impressive win for the Wings here at home. 12-4 over Rochester. Excellent play by Higgins in the net. Great all-around effort by the offensive players. Hickey with a great game. Wings win, Wings win. Well done, men. 57 shots on goal for the Philadelphia Wings. We'll recap the rest of the numbers when we come back here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. three stars. The third star, Philadelphia Wings. It all ends in handshakes down the center of the field as the Philadelphia Wings take the 12 to 4 win over the Rochester Nighthawks and they take the victory lap. Blaze Reardon has put his jersey back on after losing it in a late game altercation. He's happy as can be, as is the rest of this team. Again, a tough loss last night in New England. They have a long bus ride back overnight and they get the victory here over Rochester at the Wells Fargo Center. Power play did and what a great night. Hickey had a great game with four goals. Just wonderful winning at home in Philadelphia. Devin Caney is downstairs. Thanks, Brian. Brett, you had a hat trick and then some tonight. What was working for you? You know, I think we just stuck to our game plan. You know, we have a such an unselfish offense that anybody can go off at any time. And I got, uh, got a few opportunities that went in the back of the net. And it was just a good win all around. I think it's safe to say this matchup was a bit a bit chippy. Uh, what was going on that, down here? You know, I think you have two teams that are really battling for a win, and you know, wins are very scarce in this league, and the parity's so good, you need to fight for every win. And when one team's getting the getting the better hand, I think the other team shows some frustrations and some tiredness from last game, and stuff happens. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Congrats, Thank you. guys. Four goals for Brett Hickey on nine shots tonight, and if there was a catalyst in this game, it'd have to be him. He was deadly on the power play. We said carbon copy. There's one, there's two. Sets himself up, then he comes sprinting from the box with a goal on the, on the run, then a big laser from outside for Brett Hickey. Four goals, big night for the offensive player and the Philadelphia Wings. Season ended way too early last year for Hickey. Wings are so glad he's back this year as he has been one of the main offensive threats for this team through the early parts of the season so far. Wings go to four and two on the year, and they are two and zero at home now after this 12-4 victory. Coming up, it's post game live. We'll look back at this one, talk about some of the highlights, talk about some of the stats, and wrap things up for you here from the Wells Fargo Center this evening as the Philadelphia Wings pull within a half game now of the New England Black Wolves in the East Division with this decisive 12-4 victory. For our entire crew here at NBC Sports Philadelphia, Scott Gabrielson, I'm Brian Smith saying so long. Once again, our final score tonight is the Wings 12 and the Rochester Nighthawks 4.